Hello, my name is Mike Bach, and I'm an adjunct professor in the horticulture department here at the College of DuPage. And I teach our introduction to beekeeping in class. And I'm gonna to talk to you about a variety of things today. First, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of the seasonal beekeeping activities that go on when you have beehives. I'll transition to then talk about some of the activities that go on when you inspect an actual beehive. And then we have a short video at the end that we're going to show you of actually going into a beehive. So you can see real life, some of the frames and some of the things that you're looking for inside that actual hive. So when we talk about the seasons, there are a number of themes and then to do's in each of those. And if you start with the summer, the general themes are that the nectar flow uh, from the plants and flowers is at its peak. You also have your highest bee population, 60 plus thousand bees inside that beehive. And on warm summer days with all those bees, you get something called bearding occasionally. And essentially you see a picture on the right, lots of bees just sort of hanging out in the front porch because it's cooler there at night than it is inside the hive. One of the other things also is that in late summer, the bees start getting a little restless, get a little defensive because they've stored all that honey, they'd sure like to protect it. Now some of the to-do lists as a beekeeper, in the summer, you're going to inspect that hive every few weeks, essentially monitoring for queen health and productivity. You're going to monitor for diseases and parasites, and you're going to add honey supers as needed to give them extra space to store all the extra honey that you're going to harvest at the end of the year, which typically takes place around Labor Day. That's when most people extract honey. When you move into the fall activities, general themes are that the nectar flow from the flowering plants becomes more scarce. So the queen starts slowing down her egg laying uh, and there are less drones, male bees, practically none. And in the winter, there are none. And the high population goes down. It goes down to about one quarter of the size that you have at peak in the summer because you don't need, need that many bees to make it through the winter. And then the bees are also going up more aggressively and gathering something called propolis, which is tree sap. They use it to seal up cracks in the hive in preparation for the cold of winter. And typically you are going to wear a bee suit in the fall. The bees are more defensive, certainly don't wanna get stung. So when you go out to visit the hives, you wear your full bee suit. What's the to-do list in the fall? Well, again, you're still monitoring for the queen and the egg laying, the productivity. You don't wanna lose a queen this time of the year. That'd be very, very bad. The actual, uh, you know, winter food levels, you're monitoring for that too. You need 50 to 70 pounds of stored honey in this climate around this area for the bees to live on through the winter. If you think the hive's a little short of that, you're gonna actually do some syrup feeding to help supplement their food. You're gonna put a mouse guard on the entrance to the hive. Uh, unbelievably, mice love making winter nests inside beehives. It's warm and there's food. You don't want them in there. And you're gonna treat for parasites like mites on as necessary basis. In the winter, the general themes literally are the fact that bees are much more uh, laid back. They're calm in the winter. And so below 55 degrees, they form what's called a cluster. You can see a picture on the top right there. They gather into kind of a ball and they flex their wing muscles to keep warm. And at the center of that cluster of bees, it's 90 to 93 degrees, no matter how cold it is outside. And there's no egg laying going for the most, most of the winter, but about late winter, the queen will start laying some eggs inside that cluster to start building up some new baby and adult bees for preparation when spring comes. And there's food all over that hive. So the cluster can't really move unless the inside temperature gets to 40 or 45 degrees or more. So you hope for some of that each, each winter so the bees can move that cluster around to where food is stored to live on while it's cold out. And like everybody else, bees do need to go to the bathroom. So you're also as a beekeeper hoping for some days where it's 45 degrees or warmer in the winter and sunny. And the bees will then take a quick flight outside to go to the bathroom and fly back inside the hive. What's your to-do list? Well, you're, you're really monitoring the hive entrance to keep it clear from snow and leaves. They do need ventilation. Uh, you're also watching food levels by watching that cluster. Is it down low? If you peek inside the top of the hive, can you see the cluster? If you can't, that's good. That means there's still plenty of food. If they're at the top, they're probably running low and you might need to initiate some emergency feeding of that hive so they have food to make it. You don't want them to starve. And you do that with a candy board or dry sugar or other supplements. 
You're also going to be storing and cleaning and repairing any equipment you have in preparation for spring. And if unfortunately you have a hive that doesn't make it through the winter, it dies, you're going to order a new package of bees around this time of the year in preparation to install it when springtime comes. Now, the general themes in springtime, uh, this is really the busiest time of the year for beekeepers. Uh, you're talking about a lot of feeding, and there's a reason for it. You're going to feed them sugar syrup in a one-to-one -one concentration. That's one cup of sugar to one cup of water. And you're going to put protein patties inside the hive. You can see that protein patty on the bottom right here, uh, or in both pictures on the right. Because you see, the queen will not start laying a lot of eggs until she feels there's a good food supply, a good nectar flow going on. And so you're tricking the queen here by putting sugar syrup on and putting a protein patty in. She starts to think there's plenty of food. She'll start laying a lot of eggs and it's 20 plus days from the day it's laid, the egg is laid before that bee hatches as an adult bee. By doing feeding early, you're building up population so that when the real nectar flow starts in this area, when the trees start flowering and the bushes and plants start flowering, you have lots of bees that can go out and take advantage of it your hive gets off to a strong start. So we're gonna transition now to inspecting a Langstroth hive. I say Langstroth hive because that's the most commonly used hive design here in the United States. And a couple of main things are, is you're probably gonna wear a bee suit. I understand that you see pictures of beekeepers that go out and they don't have on a veil or gloves or a suit, but that's really only for the most experienced beekeepers and also beekeepers that don't mind getting stung because that's part of it. Uh, so most people will wear the suit. You can have your smoker to uh, give the hives a little smoke when you inspect. It calms the bees down. There's a lot of thought as to why this is the case. Some feel it interferes with their ability to communicate with each other. Uh, some feel that it makes the bees think there's a forest fire, so they're too busy trying to swallow as much honey as they can because they think that hive is going to burn up. Bottom line is it makes them calm, which is good. And then you're also gonna be aware of what direction are the bees flying in and out of the hive? Are they flying straight out? Are they flying to one side, over the back? You wanna approach in a direction that they're not flying. Typically that's from the back of the hive. So in doing so, you're gonna remove that first frame. You're gonna take the top cover off, the inner cover out, and then you're going to take your hive tool, twist it under one side of one frame, lift it up, do the same on the other side, and grab that frame, as you can see in that bottom right picture, and lift it out for actual inspection. Now you're gonna say, what are you looking for? Well, there's a variety of things. You're gonna start by watching the bees. Are they lined up at the top, on the top bars of those frames looking at you? That probably means they're getting angry. Uh, now with a little smoke, that rarely happens, okay? But if you do see that, it's time to give them just a little bit more smoke. And you're gonna check for a queen, that's a big one but you don't have to find her. That's kind of hard to do in a hive when there are lots of bees and lots of space just for one queen to hide. You're gonna look for activity from her and that's typically in the form of brand new eggs being laid. I'll show you pictures here in the next coming slides. You're also gonna expect for what's called brood pattern. Tight brood is what we call it is the best. That means you have lots of dense clusters of eggs and larvae and cat brood. That means you have a really productive queen who's using every cell available to, for the maximum benefit of that hive. Again, I'll show you pictures. And then you can look at the cappings. When the bees go into pupa stage, are those cappings convex, kind of you know, out a little? That's good. If they're kind of cave, kind of sunken, that's bad. And again, I'll show you pictures of this. So when I say looking for eggs and brood, there are four stages bees go through. There's the egg phase, there's the larva phase, and then they're capped off in the pupa stage where they develop into an adult bee where they hatch. And this picture on the left, you can see on the right side of it, very tiny eggs inside here. When you see those, you know the queen's active because they only stay eggs like this for three days. So if you find these laid inside your hive, your queen's in there somewhere doing a good job. On the left, you can see larvae. They grow very, very fast. They're fed constantly. And so they grow in larvae stage very quickly leading to the pupa stage that you see where it's capped off. And this is the example of what I call tight brood. If you notice here, these are all pupa stage uh, bees. They're capped off, they're developing into adults, and almost every honeycomb space on this frame is capped off. That means you have a very efficient, productive queen who's laying eggs in pretty much every single one of these. 
that's a beautiful sight for a beekeeper to see. Now contrast that to what we call poor brood pattern. And you can see the capped brood here is kind of sporadic. You have lots of open cells here. And there are a number of reasons why this might happen. One is that your queen is just a poor queen. She's not very productive uh, and you need to replace her pronto uh, or the bees will do it for you. But you need to replace her because if you have a poor laying queen like this, you're never going to get the high population you need of bees to go out and store the honey required to make it through the winter, much less any extra honey. Frankly, the hive will probably die. Um, so you, the other part might be disease. So you have to inspect for those types of things to see whether there's a disease issue. But this is a bad sign for beekeepers to see. You need to take action. This is just a picture of that concave cappings. It's kind of sunken look inside here. The reason for that is typically a disease called foul brood, and that's not good for your hive. You see that, you need to take action. What are you looking for? What else? How about some food? You see pollen stored in the various colors. Pollen is different color from different plants, and you'll see it inside the actual cells. Do you have any open cells that look wet? That could actually be honey that's ripening. It could be flower nectar or plant nectar. Uh, or it could be water. Bees need water like everybody else. You're also going to monitor for how full is the hive. How many frames of brood do you have in there? How many frames of food and honey? Because as they fill all these things up, you need to add more honey supers on to give them more space to store all the extra honey you hope to harvest at the end of the season. This is just a picture here of actual honey and pollen. You see these open cells, the light colored cells. That's actually pollen. You can see the different colors, kind of yellow, orange, even some that are kind of reddish. And the dark ones that look kind of shiny, that's honey that is ripening. And that's an important piece to remember because when bees convert plant nectar into honey, they store it in these cells and they ripen it, which means that they want the moisture in it to go below 19% moisture in that, that honey. Because they get it below 19%, it's mature, it's ripened, it will not ferment, it will not spoil. It's good for long-term storage. So they cap that honey off once it's full and they're ready to go to use it whenever they feel the need to do it. Now in most frames inside the lower portions of the hive, you're gonna get combinations of everything. So in the you know kind of a half circle, if you will, at the bottom of the frame, you're going to see uh, you know, open brood where there are eggs and larvae. And then you're going to see cap brood, like you see at the bottom right here, where it's bees and pupa stage. On the periphery of that, you're going to see cells with just pollen or bee bread. They take pollen from plants. They mix it with bee saliva, uh, other uh, plant nectar, uh, and even honey sometimes. And they make a shelf-stable protein called bee bread that lasts longer for them to use to feed their baby bees. Outside of that, you're gonna see honey, ripened honey stored and capped off. And once they fill all these up in the lower portions of the hive and you're adding honey supers on, the bees store nothing but honey up high. And that leads to frames that look like this. This is a full frame of capped honey. This is fully ripened, ready to go honey. Once it's full, the bees cap every one of those cells with a little wax cover. And this is what beekeepers harvest at the end of the season. Uh, this is the extra honey that the bees store. It's not the honey they need to live on in the winter, it's the extra honey. And it's a beautiful sight as a beekeeper to pull full frames of this out of hives. That means you've had a great successful year. To wrap it up here, you know, you're gonna go back and then close that hive back up after your inspection. And there are a few things you're going to do. You're going to put those frames back in the same order you took them out. That's very, very important. And you're going to push all the frames to the center so they're snug with each other to keep something called bee space consistent. And then you're going to put that feeder back on if you're using it in the spring or the summer, or excuse me, spring or the fall. And you're going to fill it up with sugar syrup. You're going to put the inner cover back on the top, being careful not to crush any bees. And then you're going to put the outer cover back on top of that, which overhangs the top of the hive to keep rain outside of the hive or keep from going inside. And you're going to put a weight back on top of that outer cover on top of the hive. Bricks work well. It could be a stone. It's just to keep a windy day from blowing the top off. And then you're going to walk a distance away quietly. And you're going to check your bee suit to see if you have any bees coming along for the ride with you. Some bees will land on you, gently brush them off, and they'll fly back to the hive. 
You don't want to have them on there when you take it off. You could have some trapped, you get one on your hand and that's almost guaranteed to get you stung. So with that, we're going to transition to a short video of a hive inspection that we did out at Cantini. Uh, and I would also tell you that if you're interested in beekeeping at all, I would encourage you to consider coming to the COD to our horticulture department and taking our introduction to beekeeping class. Thank you very much for your time today. I'm gonna light a smoker here to get some smoke, which helps calm the bees. Then we're gonna use a hive tool to open the hive up. Okay. We're gonna open a hive up and this hive actually has a honey super on top. And it's pretty full actually. You can see inside here, there's actually capped honey. The area that they're still filling right now is down low. And the area up high where you see the white sort of covers on it, that's actually capped honey. I mean, it's, it's perfectly mature, it's ready to go. Now, because I put a little smoke in it, you see all the bees sucking up all the honey. They think it's actually going to get taken away. So this yeah. particular hive, you see them all sticking their head straight in there and sucking it up because they think there's a forest fire. But that's not the case. So this is a honey super and they're still filling different areas up. You can actually pop this off and get that onto a high body. <laughs> Want to get a little bit more smoke because So we'll give them just a little more smoke. They don't need much. And now what we're gonna do, this is where they raise the baby bees. So I'm gonna pull out a frame that has actually a lot of cap brood. Meaning this is the last stage before the bees hatch. <sighs> Those are all baby bees waiting to hatch right now. And there's not much larvae on this, this particular one, so I can't really show it, but there's lots of cap brood on here. There's a couple larvae right there. If you zero in right here, you can see a little white larvae inside the open cells. The bees feed those, and when they get big enough, they actually cap them off and they grow. Oh, cool. All cap brood. Very gentle on this and slow moving. That helps keep the bees calm. This particular frame is a newer frame, so they're still building out brand new comb on it. You can see, you can see how they're building it out. They're trying, they're building out all that honeycomb on there, same on this side. This is actually a very calm hive. And the goal here is that, you know, I'm checking for those things. I'm checking for the actual Cap brew, that means you have a queen in there laying lots of eggs and it's nice and tight. So they have a lots of cap brood on almost every cell. That's a sign of a really good queen. That's thousands of bees waiting to hatch. And you can see even on some of these, if you look straight down inside here, you can see they're all working in between the frame. Anyone. Storing honey inside here. They're actually, when it gets full, they cap it off. And this is the piece I would pull off at the end of the year actually extract honey from, making sure that down low in the high bodies, there's 60 to 70 pounds of honey left over for the bees to live on over the winter. That's what they need in this climate here. So in the winter, they basically eat through that honey and they stay in a ball and keep nice and warm. And next spring, you know, they start the whole process over again. So I'm putting what's called the inner cover back on top. And then you have a telescoping outer cover like this. This is actually covers it, protects it. But if you take this camera, you can see down low here, this is where they're going into the hives. You can see where the bees come in and out. It's a couple different entrances and they fly in and out. Usually if you look close, you might see one of the bees come back with what looks like little colorful packets on their back legs, that's pollen. Okay, that's our big demonstration here of inside the hives. We have 
several hives here, as you can see. So we looked at this particular hive, which is a nice one. This one here is a little older hive and it's amazingly strong. It's already stored three full honey supers of honey. That's for those of you out there, that's over a hundred pounds of extra honey that the bees wow. provide. Very brief view, I'm gonna go a little higher. There's a very brief view of going inside a beehive, oh using my hive tool, using my smoker. Normally if I was out here by myself, I'd be very quiet because not only do you wanna be very quiet when you're in a hive, you want to move very slowly and carefully. That doesn't make the bees feel defensive. And these bees are very mellow, as you can see. They're not out here trying to sting us. Uh, they're uh, basically very quiet. They don't really want to sting you unless they absolutely have to. So anyway, thanks for your time today.